Alrighty, so I got a request to show how to tie the Hot Mess Express streamer. Um, it was up for a con. Um, I put it up uh, for like a fly naming contest, uh, and Hot Mess Express won. Um, we t I tested this fly a little bit this fall. Um, looks really good in the water. Um, we sent um, a handful of them out uh, for order orders. Or I sent a handful of them out for orders this um, off season uh, to get them out there to see if they produce um and originally it was tied on a really big big shank um and so this is a red and black one um and this is the first size i tied it in and it's tied with the um fish skull articulated shanks and the first one that i tied the first sets of patterns i tied were on the set was that the 35 millimeter um so it's really big big dumbbell eyes and then it has a um, a fire hole six or uh, eight thirty nine number six, but just like a streamer hook out the back. Um, and so um, got a request to tie them smaller, and so I did a bunch smaller, and I have I tied a bunch for order for smaller, and then I tied some for myself, and I've got enough material to tie one more. So um, the smaller size is a little different. Um, we're using smaller dumbbell eyes, um, and I'm not sure which size. Let me see. Uh, mediums, so little guys. Um, and then Fish Skull also makes a micro shank, which is 17 millimeter. It's great for like intruders and little little steelhead flies and stuff like that. But this this little shank. Um, so we're using that, and then still using the same um, 839 uh, fire hole hook for the back. And so that's what it looks like without anything on it. Um, so the majority of the fly is tied on the on on the, the hook on the back, which is where most of the movement is. Um, and it's kind of like a like a marabou zonker. Um, and where what I why I tied this fly was I was looking for a fly that would um, that would have a small profile when it got wet, but still have a lot of movement uh, for slow swinging deep water because that's where most of the trout hang out in the spring is they're in the slower water um, and so you need a fly that's got lots of movement and flash without having a lot of current with it um, so that's kind of where this came from when then the zonker just kind of gives it some body um, <clears throat> and it looks really sweet so um, I'm using six out brown thread and I've already tied my dumbbell eyes on to the micro shank um, as you can see and then I have um, art, and, I, and I've attached the uh, hook in the back there. Um, and I've laid my thread base down, and everything's glued. Um, and so um, I'm using a brown grizzly zonker, um, zonker strips or rabbit strips. Um, but to start, uh, we're using um, some barred marabou for the tail. And you can use any marabou for the tail. You can change the color. Like I said, I have one in black and red here. Um, so this one, um, so I'm just using some of this grizzly, um, marabou for the back tail here. And I'm just measuring it out to the same length as the hook shank. Tying that in, turning off the tag in there. And then, um, you add your first piece of marabou and we're going to, tie this in and I'm using olive um, sometimes I use two different colors of olive you can put brown in it um, to kind of like very uh, variation uh, variate the color but um uh, I ran out of the other color of olive so this one's getting tied with all one color olive so you tie the marabou in tip first and you're gonna palmer this over just like you would hackle um, and just like a steelhead fly but you're gonna um, Use your bodkin to like tease out the marabou as you spin it. Yep, yep, yep. And you want three to four turns. Um, you don't want a lot. Uh, if you overdo it, it'll um, get this really big bulbousy look to it. Um, and we want it to be a nice slim profile. And the reason why we're using the marabou is because it has lots of movement without having to have a whole lot of current on it. The more current marabou has, 
the, the, the slimmer the profile it gets. So that's four there. Um, the less current, the more it kind of like undulates and flows. And so that's kind of the principle behind this fly is when we're streamer fishing in the spring, we're typically using a 10 foot seat because the water is a little high and sometimes it's dirty. Um, but a lot of times it's clear, especially up, up over the Tianaway where we fish a lot of the time. Um, and uh, so a streamer that has a lot of movement where there's not a lot of current. And so Marabou gives us that effect and it's really easy to tie with. And it can take a bee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all I've done is just kind of swept those fibers back um, and kind of laid some soft thread wraps to get them to kind of kick back. Um, then we're going to add some brown crystal flash. And again, if you are tying, you can tie this in lots of different colors. So go nuts. Um, you can also buy these flies and I can tie them for you. Um, they are five bucks a pop. So I've taken three strands of crystal flash and I've V'd it over the thread and I just bring it up to the top give it a couple to get it in place and then I pull them to the side to make sure that they go where I want wet my fingers and get that marabou out of the way hold everything down and just kind of wrap back on that Boop. there we go all right and then um now you'll tie in your uh your zonker strip um and one of the things you can do right here before you put that in is just give a dash of dubbing right there and all that's going to do is just give that zonker a little base and also kind of cover up all the ugliness that I just put on there. Uh, so then we take our zonker strip and um, we don't need a whole lot. We'll part the hair right there and tie it in. We we'll cut it to shape later since it's the last one I have. Um, so we hold it on the top with the two fingers out the back here and we just give one two nice loose thread wraps so that we can kind of position that. We don't want it to roll. So what we want it to do is just sit up there nice and flat um, and kind of wrap around the hook shank. And that's why we put that little base of dubbing there that kind of gives us something to grip onto and lay up there flat. And so once I have that in, in place, just lick your fingers and get that hair out of the way so that you can give one good tight thread wrap and another. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our head cement or our glue or whatever we're using to stick our fly together and we're just going to give it a little dash here Oops. and again I'm going to part the, the fiber so I don't get it on the hair and just boop right there on the thread flip it over and do the same thing just so that it doesn't shift and it kind of seals it there we, we, I don't like it when they move or shift and it can ruin the rest of the fly. So just kind of let that dry for a second and then give that a good tug and pull it out the back and get your thread in front of it right at the base. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a dubbing loop in here. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna make a loop with your fingers and then wrap your thread up to the three quarter mark of that hook. And then I have the the Pedigee and Bobbin so I can do the, the dubbing loop with the, with the Bobbin if I want, but I'm gonna do it with the the dubbing loop tool. Um, now when I was a production, when I would tie production flies, we would make all these brushes ahead of time so that they would go on a lot quicker. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to do it um, just straight up. So I'm using sparkle minnow, um, ice dub that's uh, minnow belly, like the little sparkle minnow, uh, uh, sparkle dub uh, for uh, the belly. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the fibers and you're just going to start pulling them apart. You want all the fibers to go lengthwise. Um, and so one of the things is just as you pull them apart, twist, pull, twist, pull, and you'll start to you can pull out some of the excess that you don't need because um, you don't need a whole lot here. And all I'm trying to do is get everything to go lengthwise because um, we're going to make a kind of like a flat wing body almost, but we're going to tie it in, brush it out a little differently. So as I do this, you'll see that they all start to kind of line up and that's what we want. Anything that doesn't want to line up, you can start to like pull out and get rid of. And like I said, you don't need a whole lot. You'll probably end up taking most of this out 
That's probably enough. That's very good. So now all the fibers are kind of going one way. Then we stick it in the loop, like so. And then what we want to do is we want to spread those out so that they're not all bunched up on each other. Um, so we just kind of want to spread them out evenly in the dubbing loop, kind of working them between our fingers and making sure that they're in there. And that's the reason why we pulled the fibers up uh, lengthwise, so that they're all kind of laying the same way so that when we put them in here, they sit right. Perfect. Fire. Should have turned my ceiling fan off. All right. And then we're going to work that up to here. Give it a spin. And it's okay if it does that. It's fine. All right. So now we pull it tight. And we're going to start looping this thing on here. Just like you would any other dubbing noodle. Um, but as every turn, we're going to take our fingers and we're going to pull the fibers back. Take our fingers, pull the fibers back. Zerp. 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 Sound effects help. And I already can tell that I put too much on here. Uh, and that's okay. Um, you can undo the loop and pull it out. All right, so we're here. I'm just going to pull this out because we don't, we don't need much. Like I said, it was like eight, nine turns maybe. And you can spin this out. Kind of pull. What you don't need. Uh, it's harder to take it away than it is to add it. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're doing dubbing. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna give it one more good turn here. And then tie that off. Put too much stuff in there. All right, and then just clip the dubbing noodle off. Secure that in place. All right, and then take your um, dubbing brush. And you're going to kind of like brush everything up towards the front of the fly on the bottom too. Wet your fingers and pull all that marabou and the stuff out the back of the fly so it stays out of the way. Okay, once you get it, kind of get it out away from the body, then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start brushing it to the side, like horizontal, flat, not up and down. Um, we want that zonker strip to lay flat across the body. And then what happens is all the fibers kind of sweep back and create this nice flat, flashy body. And there's a lot of movement on the back of that fly. So it's like flash, 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 flash. flash. Yeah. So, uh, and I'll flip the brush around and just start teasing the fibers out away from the body, pulling them, give them good tugs. If you spun that loop hard enough, they shouldn't come out. Um, and any that do, you can just kind of pull off. You don't need them. Flip the fly over if you've got a rotary vise. And do the same thing on the bottom. And kind of even, even it out. What you're trying to do is just pull the fibers to each side so that they're somewhat even. And I probably could have stuffed a little more dubbing in there. And it's just really thick here in the front. But don't be afraid to get in there and really brush it out. You can also use a dubbing teaser, which I don't have um, in my toolkit here. Um, which is this little, like, pokey thing with all the barbs on it. And you just pull that dubbing out and then use the brush. And so there we go. I see it's, I've kind of made it horizontal out away from the, the fly. And then take your scissors, and I have these fancy curved hand scissors. And you're just going to kind of cut it to shape. And it's just like a little flat, almost crab shape. And you just want to even them out. It doesn't need to be a lot. Less is more, like hairspring cologne. There's a lot of flash in there. So there, see, I just kind of trimmed it so they all just kind of swept back in a chevron shape almost. All right, and that's that. Um, and then what you're gonna do is tie in another piece, or no, tie in a crystal flash. <clears throat> so take that brown crystal flash that we tied in the back there. We'll take three strands of it and V it onto the thread up to the top. Slide that in there. Oh, we didn't make that very even, Nate. There we go. Boom. All right, pull them to the side. All right. Then we need another piece of marabou. And so I'm going to take in another feather. You're going to kind of pull the fibers away from the top. 
and tie that in at a 45. Don't need the tip. Okay. Cinch that down. Take your bodkin and give this three to four turns, pulling the feather out as you spin. And again, what this does is it just creates a lot of movement and this all sweeps back and it just keeps that kind of profile throughout the whole fly. And so you don't want to overdo it. Like there's, we're going to do one more there and that is it. Don't need a lot. Um, you can easily overdo it with marabou. It's really easy. A lot of the times when I do my steelhead flies, I would always put however many turns I put on and then subtract two, um, three to four with this fly. All right, trim that off. Perfect. We've got that nice palm, pop, palmered over popped out look. Sweep all the fibers back. A couple of soft wrap, thread wraps back on top of everything to sweep them back. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally, you have three strands of red crystal flash. And you're gonna V those on and tie those into the front. Put them on either side. Make those more even, mate. There we go. Boom. And those are kind of in the place to where the gills would be. So you could you can play around with that. You can add more or put like a little dubbing brush in there or a little collar that's red. But just some red flash just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. Um, all right. And then what you're going to do is you're going to whip finish here. Um, over the top of the front of this hook or the front of the fly. Um, all right. I'm just going to clean that head up a little bit. Boop. And you know what I'm going to do? One more. There we go. And trim that. And then you're going to glue that um, whip finish down. Top and bottom. Try not to get glue in the hook because there's that articulation in there. Or in the eye there. So clean that up. All right, so then we pop the back of the fly out of the vise, and we're gonna st stick the front end of the, of the fly in the vise right there on that back eye there. Make sure you get it in there good, otherwise it'll snap out of there and it could break and that would suck. Um, so let's let the back of the fly dangle there. We'll grab our thread, we'll wet that so it gets out of the way, thank you and lay a thread base down on top all right and our final piece of marabou here we get one more piece oh don't want them out of there all right pull the fibers right from the tip maybe 45 degree angle in four There we go. All right, and then we spin. And work those feathers out again. And that's the thing with this fly is there's lots of pieces, lots of parts. So it just takes a little bit of time. Um, every part adds a minute or two. And when you're talking and explaining, it makes it go a little slower. Um, so that's three. I will fit one more in there. And again, tease those out. Work that thread through. And again. again. Oop. Perfect. Alright. Sweep all the fibers back. In just a couple of soft thread wraps. Bam, just like that. Then what you're gonna do is throw a little dubbing wax on there, if you're into that. Wet those fibers, get them out of the way. Then you're gonna take some olive dubbing. I'm using Senyo's Fusion Dub and Emerald. It's flashy. 
Um, I like a little flash on the head of this fly, uh, especially since they didn't have the red dumbbell eyes in this size, which is what it normally would be tied with. So I'm going to just put a little flash here in the front um, under the head. And then we tie that zonker strip in, and we're done. So just a nice little loop there, sweep the fibers back, and just kind of build up a little, little head there, and then wrap around the um, dumbbell eyes, come to the front of them, a couple of thread wraps to secure that down, and you should have just enough room to tie that zonker strip in. It's going to be tight, okay? All right, so here's the hard part. So you got to bring this zonker strip forward, and I want you to do is grab the, you got to grab this back hook and kind of pull it forward. And then what we're going to do is we part the fibers up here in the front. And all that stuff will fall out of the way once it gets wet. So don't worry about it. Just kind of sweep it out of the way. We're just going to do, we're going to pull apart the hair on the zonker strip. And we're going to lay it on top of the eyes. And the dumbbell eyes, and we're just going to give two soft thread wraps and just kind of pull it tight so it secures it in place. And we're going to pop it out of the vise and measure it out. So I got glue in the, the eyes. So we're going to work that out. There we go. Because you don't want it to be, you don't want the zonker strip to be too tight and you don't want it to be too loose. And right now it's a little too tight. I got to give it a little bit more. Um, so, so that it doesn't like pull the, the back end of the fly up and it doesn't articulate. But you don't want it too loose that it has this big like hump in it. So, put that back in the vise, unwrap, unwrap, right, maybe, there, and we want to repart a little further forward to measure that out. And you can do this a couple of different ways, this is just the way I do it. I think I probably got it on that one. And there's glue in the eye. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you don't want a big loop in there. You just want it to kind of kind of you just want it to kind of rest on top of everything and still have enough to move. So we've got that there. Stick it back in the vise. And then what we can do is we can secure that with two more really nice tight thread wraps, and you're gonna pull that tag in forward. To, or to pull that tag in from the front towards the back of the fly and wrap in front with the thread and then come down and clip that off and get it really close get all of that off of there we don't we don't want anything hanging out because we want to clean up the head really nice when we tie this fly off so I'm just gonna trim in the excess hair and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work that th thread right back to the dumbbell eyes and grab my whip finish tool And tie it off. There we go. And then what you'll do is grab your head cement. Kind of pull the zonker strip hairs out of the way. Flip it over and do the bat. And underside of the fly. There we go. It works better if you don't use the brush, but there we go. Okay, so the fly is tied now. What you want to do is measure the zonker strip out the back. You don't want it to hang too far off the back of the fly. Otherwise, the fish will get all fly or all tail and no hook. So you're just going to trim that tail so that it only overhangs the rest of the fly just by a little bit right and the hook is right there okay and you can see there's that flashy underside belly and there's lots of movement to the fly all you got to do is now to finish it off is pull the crystal flash and just kind of make sure they're close to even with each other they don't all have to be exact and there you go you got dumbbell eyes little body and it's a really slim pro profile when it gets wet 
Um, and that zonker strip kind of fills it out and gives it camouflage. And so when it gets down on the river bottom, it looks like a little sculpin or something, but when it's flowing through the really slow, deep current, it has lots of movement to it and it has lots of like color and flash. And that's what we're after. So there you go. There's the hot mess, hot mess express with those, um, fish skull articulated shanks, but lots of movement, lots of color, lots of flash. Yummy, yummy. There you go. Hot Mess Express. Till next time.